see this many faces on a snowy morning. Um, if you look inside your bulletin for the announcements, um, please pull out the part that says the Easter flower orders. Um, we have to call an order in very soon to get it started. So if you could at least fill that out and put it in the offering plate, even if you don't have the cost of the flower today, um, it'll help us get that order started. Um, we do need to have all the orders in by the first Sunday of March. So if you could, um, if you plan on ordering Easter flowers, please um, take care of that today as, or as soon as possible. Um, there are, are multiple um, announcements in the bulletin. Um, the um, Pastor's Bible study continues Monday night. Then um, next Sunday, uh, we will have, with fellowship time, a lunch. And um, it, we will also be sharing the stories of the old church and the beginnings of this church. And uh, Reverend Gunkel will be here to help share those stories. So, it, it, But everyone is invited to attend that lunch. Um, the UMW will be providing a um, deli tray and rolls, and so that's why if you've received a phone call from someone asking if you're planning on attending, we just need to know how much food will be um, needed to provide the, the enough food, and um, we were just trying to get a basic idea of how many to plan on. So if you've received a phone call asking if you were coming, that's the reason, so we can know how many to plan on for next Sunday. March the 3rd is the day that we begin making Easter eggs. And lots of us like to get together that on the beginning of Easter egg making. And the, the uh, motto is, come when you can and leave when you must. So if you, even if you've never done it before, would like to join us, it starts on March the 3rd. And the orders for Easter eggs are in the back, in the, um, as you, the table before you get into Fellowship Hall, so um, we would like to start um, having you um, fill out the order forms for your Easter eggs. And if you could just read the rest of the announcements that are in the bulletin and act accordingly. And the pastor has a, an announcement he would like to make. Just a couple of things, please, as we begin. You note by the uh, banner that's here, and uh, purple stole, purple hangings, that today we begin uh, the season of Lent and are reminded of the 40 days of preparation. Well, I guess there's only 36 of them left. Uh, now, as we move uh, toward Easter and prepare our hearts um, in our devotion to the Lord. We're also making preparation for the services of Holy Week. On Good Friday, our evening service, beginning at 7, will be a service of the seven last words. And we're reaching out to uh, you, to folks of the congregation, to bring thoughts on those words. Already, uh, three or four of the folks of our congregation have volunteered to bring about a four or five minute uh, meditation on one of those seven last words of Christ from the cross. Uh, I would uh, offer that possibility to you as well. And though it may seem something of uh, a challenge to talk on one of those seven last words, what did it mean that Jesus said, I thirst? What did it mean if Jesus turns to the thief and says, today you'll be with me in paradise? Um, but I also have a few books that speak briefly on those words that might give you some thoughts to start with. So if you would like to do one of those words, three to five minutes is good. Speak to me following the service and we'll negotiate which one might be good for you. In other ways, we prepare our hearts uh, during the season of Lent to draw closer in our walk with the Lord. We worship in sadness today because of the death of our friend, our choir director, uh, 
uh, our beloved uh, Bray Miles. It uh, comes as suddenness when the health difficulties of his life catch up with him and our lives are now um, are now not the same because he is no longer with us. So as we worship today, we are keenly aware of his absence with us, but let our hearts also be keenly aware of his presence with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our study of the book of Revelation makes one thing clear. There is a great deal of singing in heaven. Amen. Amen. I mean, it just never stops. It just never stops. And Ray is now singing in the choir. And we give thanks to God. We will take time during our service and our prayer time this morning to have prayer for him. But we hold him in our hearts um, as we worship the Lord today. And now, um, the peace of Christ be with you. And also be with you. And now we'll pass that peace with our neighbors. <laughs>
or unintentional sins of our thoughts, words, or deeds in silent prayer. Jeremiah made, and we're quite sure 
that if Paraguay brings their block up, we can uh, make something more significant out of this. Now you'll note that we're all going to, oh, don't be afraid, just bring your block up. Uh, um, and, and then Jeremiah will do, let's leave these up and other people will build on top of these, okay? Yeah, there you go. All right. If anybody doesn't see more money, we can do that. All right? And it's okay if anybody has any suggestion as to how this best may go. But we certainly want to build something significant. And you notice that we're building on our basic block, which is, uh, there it is, laid alongside of it, which is the block of Christ, because he is the foundation of stone, and everything builds on him. Uh -huh. The pillars, oh, I see, we've got some good pillars of the church. Gather around, gather around, gather around, let's see what we can do. Whoop, whoop, whoop. How do you think they're doing so far, Jeremiah? Not bad, huh? Not bad. Oh, oh. oh. Well, I'll have to uh, figure out how to use them, huh? What do you think, Jeremiah? Well, there's a lot of blocks yet to come. we got to make room for more. Some people have round blocks. That's not going to be easy. So, oh, it's getting bigger. It's getting bigger. What do you think? Look at that one. Aha, aha, aha. What do you think? Wanda should be good at this for your blocks. <laughs> oh, look at, look at Patty. Look at Patty, what she's got. All right, there we go. Oh, look at that. I would not have done that, but then again, I'm not being so. <laughs> That's right. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Look out, here comes, oh, what do you do with a round block? But it fits in. Uh-oh, that's the roundest of all. <laughs> it's coming, it's coming. There you go, look at that. You think that'll work? Oh, nice, very nice. It even looks good from the side. What do you think, Barry? I put it right up on the top. What if yours goes from here to here? Would that happen? Right on top, Mary. <laughs> I use it. All right, how's it coming? Now, you know one thing. The longer this takes, the shorter the sermon is. <laughs> or at least that's what you want. Wow, Jeremiah, look at this. Look at, look at, look at. Pastor Bob putting his up on there. Ah, and now, last but not least. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. All right, Jeremiah, let's just stand back and look at this for just. Do, 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 do. <laughs> what do you think? Did we do a good job? Huh? Was that me or you? I think that's you. I think we did a great job. Huh? Yeah, so what do we learn out of this? Well, we learn what? If everybody contributes their block, we can do something significant. Huh? Yeah, let's give it a hand. Assistant, 
And if you have a bulletin in your hand this morning, you can thank Arnetta for that because uh, that was a product of her work. And we thank you very, very much uh, for being here. Uh, Arnetta is a member of Our Lady of Victory. Is that right? Uh, Roman Catholic Church on Wilkins Avenue. Um, and um, comes to us having worked also with the United Church, Church of Christ office. So a, a deep church background. And uh, she is a Sunday school teacher of uh, fourth graders, I think, on Sunday morning, which is why she's just coming in now. Uh, and we'll be here in our office from 9 to 12 on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. We welcome you. And we're so glad to have you. We're called to prayer today, uh, as we are called every Sunday when we gather together. Um, that we might uh, that we might feel a, uh, a closeness. Um, there is something about uh, you've been in a crowd. You've been in a crowd somewhere where everybody's been milling around, and all of a sudden over there something is happening, and everybody looks in that direction. We are no longer a crowd. We are now an audience. We are now a gathering of people with a focus on that one particular direction. Such we are as a congregation. When we come here together and then focus on God, boom, it just pulls us all together. We should be able to feel the arms of one another reaching around us. And if we can, if we can feel that way, it is that it is the spirit that's in our midst because it is the spirit that brings us together. And if we can, if we have that sense of those arms, we can also have the sense of the arms of God that surround us. Huddle then in that situation with that closeness to each other and, 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 in, and to God we reach out and pray. Let us pray first as we gather today. Let us pray first for our, our brother now gone from us, Ray Miles. Let us pray God's uh, warm embrace of his spirit as uh, he moves into God's presence. <coughs> Let us pray for strength and comfort for those of Ray's close cadre of friends and that great network of friends that Ray had. One of the wonderful things that I discovered about him is that he always knew somebody else, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, Chuck would come and sing. Um, Jack would come and sing. And then there's this lady he knows that plays the flute, and she came to the Christmas Eve service. And then there's somebody else from up near Frederick. Ray always seemed to know somebody else. And in prayer time, he would say, and remember this person that I know that I've been working with. Ray always seemed to know somebody else. That whole array of people that Ray knew and that know Ray. We pray for them, for their strength and comfort. We're so pleased to have Jack and his wife with us this morning to share in this prayer with us. And Jack, our prayers with, are with you as you move through these days and make arrangements and so forth to honor Ray in services. And so let us now unite our hearts in prayer. Good and gracious God, in life, and in death, you are always with us. Good and gracious God, your mercy always reaches out to us. Help us to know the goodness of your heart that receives Ray Miles into your presence. Ah, Lord, what a spirit he brings. Oh, Lord, what a life he brings. But, oh, Lord, nothing in comparison to the spirit and life that you give to him. And we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, for all that Ray is and does and has contributed to our church, to other churches, to people, and to life in general. We just thank you for that. And we praise you for that. What a wonderful thing you did in making Ray Miles. And we thank you for his presence with us. We pray, Lord, now, uh, your strength and comfort for those whom he leaves behind. And emptiness here this morning, Lord, because he's not here. We are not the same. We are not the same. 
And we pray a full gift of your spirit to fill our hearts and our assembly as we gather here. We pray your blessing upon us as we then, Lord, move on. We pray, Lord, that you be with Jack and with others <coughs> who deeply associated with him now pick up their lives. Guide them, Lord, in arrangements for Ray that it may be good and appropriate and strong and wonderful. But guide them in their feet and their hearts and their spirit in these days and uphold them. We know your love and your mercy brings us together. And we pray, Lord, that you hold us together, honoring him, loving you, serving one another. In Jesus' name, amen. We had also with other prayers in our hearts and would welcome them uh, now as uh, we extend our prayers to the joys and concerns that uh, are in our hearts. Are there others for whom we should pray this day? The families of the 17 children who were killed. Yeah, Absolutely. the families and indeed the whole community. Yes. And I think indeed our nation, as once again we are afflicted by a mass shooting. But we hold those folks in our prayers. And in our prayers, oh Lord, show us what it is we need to do to hold our, the lives of our people more precious. And that we may find a way away from this kind of tragedy. Others? Stand. I'm having surgery on Thursday, so oh. please. Yeah, we'll be with you. We'll be with you. And said it's 99% certain it'll be simple. Okay. The 1%. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, yeah. So. Well, let's see. I think everybody here has a 99% prayer. <laughs> for you on, uh, on Thursday. And I guess saying the prayer is keep it simple, Lord. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Or we could say keep it simple, stand. Or keep it simple, surgeon. And it's a kiss prayer. All right. Yeah. We pray for you. Yes. I'd like to pray for the choir because you're right. You're in such a presence. Yeah. 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 We pray for our choir. Um, and for their next rehearsal. And where that will go. Children that we brought into the church. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Thought of uh, Daniel and Josh and Sam and uh, Charlie. Yeah, Jack? Uh, and I'd like to say a prayer of thanks uh, to everyone here for... Take your time. So. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, for being his family and his friends and taking such great care of him. I know he appreciated it every day. And I did too. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, we continue to be Absolutely. his family, which makes us a part of your family. Thank you. We will be there. And we will be there. Can you pray for uh, Carolyn and, and uh, Phyllis um, as they struggle and uh, to recover um, and to move on? Phyllis already preparing for surgery on, I think it's the 7th of March, something like that. Um, so we keep her in our prayers. Let us pray again. Lord, here we are again. Our boats are so small and the sea is so vast that we have to constantly look to you, Lord, as the great sailor of the seas. Oh, as more than that, the maker of the seas. <laughs> The designer of the seas. Oh, Lord, you who command the wind and the waves. We just look to you. Storms of light may gather, but you will stand by us and we thank you. And we praise you and we honor you for that. Lord, in our hearts, in our hearts, we just know there's too much death in our world. And we just pray for those most recently afflicted um, by the death of a mass shooting. Be with those in Parkland, Florida, and touch the lives of each of them, those families. How, Lord, how, Lord, did they find the next step, the next day, the next week? You be with them, we pray. And again, we pray, Lord, that you be with us, all of us, who suffer the loss of a dear friend, 
and of a choir director, and of a mentor, and of a companion, and of a fellow worshiper. And we just ask for your strength to be with each person that Ray has touched, that know that that touch is good. That honor is still there. Whether he's here or not, that honor is still there. And that which he has moved within us keeps moving. And we honor him in that. And we thank you, Lord, for all that he has done. We pray that you lead each one forward. Finding not how to figure this out, what this means, but only just maybe, Lord, being able to say, we just thank you that we know him. We just thank you that uh, he was a part of our life. And we just thank you, Lord, that we know for sure and certain that he is with you now. And we pray you be with us now in all that we do. Help those of us uh, in this life who still struggle on. Be with Stan, Lord, as he uh, looks forward to that surgery on Thursday. May it do everything and more that it's supposed to do. May it just be not 99%, but may it be 100% perfect that all is well with him. And you are there, and it is good, and we thank you for that. Be with Carolyn as she continues to recover. Be with Phyllis, looking forward to her surgery. Be with all, Lord, and just seek to find another step forward and to be uh, healthier and stronger. But know that uh, your rod and staff suffice. And you uh, walk with us through every valley, through every shadow, and lead us to that great table that is spread before us, and anoint us with oil, and let our cup runneth over, because your goodness and mercy follows us every day of our life, and will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hear our prayer, O Lord, in Jesus' name. And in his words we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the glory forever. Amen.
gospel reading is Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21, and 24 to 33. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in wealth. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body. What you will wear is life not more than food, and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valued than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, Will not he much more clothe you than little faith, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows what you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. And now we will sing, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, which is found in the hymnal, page number 349. Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? 
but strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. And this is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. There could be nothing more obvious than um, what Paul said, that we all have different gifts. Oh, by the way, I forgot to put my uh, on deal in this morning. So um, it's not complete until every last block is on there. But there's nothing more obvious but that everybody has a different gift. I mean, we would want Jack to sing, but not his wife. It's not her gift. Right? And we sure wouldn't want Lee to sing, but he's a great treasure for us, right? Paul says nothing more obvious than that we all have uh, have, have different gifts. Um, and, and, and he said, but the question is, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? And he seeks to unfold that mystery for us, which you have already figured out, right? And that is this. Every gift comes from that box of blocks that we got out of the nursery. And I put it out there because I thought, why should those blocks sit unused? When we come here on Sunday morning, and we always like to have something better to do than listen to the sermon, I don't know, we'll all play with blocks. No. <laughs> oh, all the gifts, Paul says, come from the Holy Spirit. That is from God's Spirit. Every gift is given. Where'd you get that? I got that from the Holy Spirit. He said, that's the first thing. Think about that. Every gift that you have, all those gifts, all come from the Holy Spirit. And Paul says, two things you ought to know about that. Once you say you have a gift, then you have to say, there is a Holy Spirit. Because that's where I got it. The other thing you have to say, if they all come from the same place, they ought to go to the same place, right? So what Paul says, since it is that, and that was in 1 Corinthians 12, if you're listening and taking notes or want to read it when you get home, all those gifts come from the same place, ought to go to the same place. And so every time you recognize that you have a gift, it is that it is to be contributed to the building up of this. Now, believe it or not, my friends, this stands for the body of Christ. Whether Christ would be happy about that or not, I do not know. But at least we could say to him, we're trying, we're trying, Lord, to build the body of Christ here. Um, and we're trying to recognize the fact that we got that gift from the Spirit. Wait a minute. No, 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 something about the Spirit. If we knew something about the Spirit, we'd know something more about how God wants us to use those gifts which we got from the Spirit, right? Well, one of the things we can know for sure is that that Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. Christ comes to give us that Spirit. It's just like Jesus. And what Jesus was really good at, because the Spirit was in Him, was two things, I think. One was using every gift that He had. And Jesus outgives us all, right? Jesus outgives us all. That's why it takes every gift that God has given every one of us to come at least to some approximation of the fullness of Jesus. I mean, he had the gifts of healing, he had the gift of teaching, he had the gift of walking on water. I like that one. He had the gift of turning uh, bread into food for thousands of people, right? He had the gift of raising people from the dead. He had the gift of making the lame walk, the blind see. I mean, they could go on and on. But he used every one of them, not in a private practice, but for the good of all. But for the good of all. And the other gift he had was bringing people together. Huh? I mean, think about forming that 12, that gang of 12 that he had. Oh, what a diverse group of people they were. But he brought them together. And then we know that he made a larger group, a group of 70 that he brought together. And then through the Spirit, he brings together thousands of people in the church. He was great at gathering people. So we know that what the Spirit is really good at is two things. Using every gift that everyone has, how does Paul put it? For the common advantage or for the common good. Um, the word is the same word from which symphony comes from. Symperion is the, is the Greek word that means common good. To make us a symphony. Huh? To make us a symphony. I'm reminded of uh, 
of Ray when I said that because um, he was good at making symphony. Um, <laughs> he was kind of like the uh, he was kind of like the Geico advertisement of uh, of choir directing. I think um, you know that Geico ad where it says uh, more, more, more. Remember that one that had to do with Christmas decorations. And, and he says, no more, and more. And before you know it, he's got a house you can see from space back. Um, <laughs> so that, that was like Ray. And, and, and you all know that, right? Because he would say, well, you could do this. But pretty soon it was this and this and this. <laughs> he got my daughter to sing um, O Holy Night on Christmas Eve. And she was fully prepared to do that because she had been working on that with, uh, with her music teacher for a, a recital. And so she knew that really well the first verse. But Ray said, oh boy, on Christmas Eve, we, we'll sing the third verse too. No, 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 I want to sing the third verse. <laughs> but but Ray, Ray would say, no, you sing the third verse. It wasn't like, well, I would like it or it would be good. No, you sing the third verse. And guess what happened on Christmas Eve? She sang the first verse and then she sang the third. <laughs> and it all went very, very and I think that's uh, the Holy Spirit working, bringing all things together for the common good. Let's see what we can make when we put something together. Oh, it could be better. Yeah? It could be bigger. It could be brighter. It could be more beautiful. But look, it is together. And if I were any kind of staging guy, I would now have a spotlight shine on this. Yeah? It's now together. And that's as it should be. How do you get there? How do you get there? Jesus gives us a basic clue. I think I need about three more minutes for this sermon, so I think we're okay in terms of time, okay? Well, maybe five, okay? Because <laughs> uh, Jesus comes into the, into the temple. Now, this is in the 12th chapter of Mark. It's in like the 20-something chapter of Luke, so it's near the end of his ministry. Mark only has, what, 14 chapters? So it's near the end of his ministry. Jesus comes into Jerusalem uh, on Palm Sunday, right? And, and, and what he does more than anything else while he's there is to go into the temple. He goes in the temple on the first day, looks around. Goes in the temple on the second day, throws out the money changers. Goes in the temple the third day and comes into conflict with the uh, Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the scribes who are there. People just give him nothing but trouble people that he knew wanted to kill him. But isn't this interesting? He went to church anywhere, anyway. He went to church anyway. We're not going to let any of that stop him from going to church. A little sub-lesson here. There are people who tell you, I don't go to church anymore because the hypocrites are there. <laughs> How would you know? It takes one to know one is what I say. <laughs> <laughs> or, I don't like the way this one sings. Or, I don't like what that one says. Don't let nobody, nothing, stop you from coming to church. That was Jesus. I know when I go there, they're going to be out to get me, but I'm going to go anyway because it's my father's house and that's where I belong and that's where I'm going to go and that's where I'm going to give my worship to God. He goes in, the Pharisees ask him questions about one thing or another. Uh, what do you think about this, Jesus, to try to trick him up on taxes? The Pharisees ask him a question, what do you think about this, Jesus, about the life after death and try to trick him up on that? The scribes have a question to ask him, what's the greatest commandment? Boom, boom, boom. He's just handling all those. But he's there in church. He's there honoring his God. He's there honoring God's righteousness and praying that righteousness to be in his heart. But he is also watching what's going on. You know, when we think about Jesus being present in the church, um, that's good because we love having him here. But he's watching what's going on. On this particular day, he said, it says he's standing back by the treasury. Not the treasury, <laughs> the treasury. Now the way the treasury worked was this, and you know because you've heard this story a million times. Every time it's stewardship time, which it is now in good old Trinity Church, it's stewardship time, you hear this story. And the story is this, that at the front of the church, at the treasury place, there were 13 trumpets. I don't know why 13, it's not a number that means anything to me in the Bible, but there were 13 of them. And they started big and they got little. And they were made that way, why? Because they were made of metal. So if you put coins in there, anybody remember the old streetcar? You'd get on, you put your coin in, and it would jingle. Ah, that's the way it was, yeah. And the more jingle you made, the better you were, right? 
I think that's where Jingle Bells came from. But you put your money in and listen to a jingle in there and just stand back and be as proud as punch about what you had done. And Jesus would just stand back and take little notes on that. And he watched them. One after another came up and jingled away. Just jingled away. And then he watched, you know, the widow came up. Poorest of the poor. Which he had two coins. Little mites. Apparently those coins were each worth about a sixteenth of what they called a denarius. Now what a denarius was, was the amount of money that it would take to live for a day. Right? One denarius per day. What she had was two sixteenths to do that. Somebody math. One eighth. One eighth. One eighth of what it would take to live a day. She had enough for three hours. All right? That's all she had. And she put them in. They hardly made a, hardly made a sound when he went into the trumpet. And Jesus stopped everything. And he says, I want you to notice something. That woman gave more than everybody else. That woman gave more than everybody else. How do you know, Jesus? She said, I, Jesus said, I know because when you ask her what you got left, what would she say? Nothing. Nothing. You ask those guys that put in all that other stuff, what do you got left? Well, I got a house, I got a barn, I got a car, I got this, I got that, I got a boat, etc., etc. What Jesus gives us the example of is what he wants is our all. If we gave her all, how big would that be? Huh? If we gave her all, how big would that be? Listen, Jesus doesn't just say that idly because in just a week, he was about to give his all. Right? Jesus gives his all. So he knew exactly what he was talking about. When he finished on the cross, he would say to Jesus, when he got left, then he would say nothing. It's all given. It's all Tells us that's how we should give. Oh Lord, I can't do that. I can't do that. I made a pretty good offering uh, of, of my uh, livelihood. And Jesus uh, says, uh, I am the Geico of givers. I am the Geico of givers. More. More. I heard a man explain the other day, he said it's this way. The Lord said to me, after I thought I'd given everything, what about your house? I can't give my house. I live in that house. What about your house? Will you give all? And so he gave his house to the Lord. And I don't know what he meant by that. How do you give your house to the Lord? He said, Lord, it's your house. And then the Lord said, uh, someday somebody's going to come to you and is going to need a place to live. You've got no place else to live. Remember, it's not your house, it's mine. And you give him a place. See where it's going? See where it's going? I give it all to the Lord. And then what you need, Lord, you use for your good. Because it's all yours. It's all yours. We need to have that same. It's all yours, Lord. It is all yours. Now, I do have an escape clause for you in this. Um, I think it's a fine uh, print thing. I think it's a footnote thing. And that is, uh, our teaching in the uh, Old Testament is that um, uh, a tenth represents all. Okay, um, and, and, and I think we can work this because in the day when it is that you want to thank the Lord for all your harvest, you would bring a tenth to the temple and give it to the Lord and the Lord's blessing would be upon that and your harvest and it would be for all. All right, so that our goal therefore in our giving is a, is a percentage, it is a tenth. And I don't say that because we need your money. I say that because you need to give it. I need to give it. It's a spiritual exercise to say to the Lord, like that woman, I trust you entirely, Lord. I think one of the funniest things Jesus ever said was, uh, don't worry about what you're going to eat. I don't know about you, but every day in my house, the question is, what's for supper? <laughs> and I ought to quote Matthew 5, 28 every day. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. <laughs> But, but Jesus was serious. He give it all to the Lord and know that the Lord provides. The Lord provides. Here's a tent, Lord. It's yours. Take it. I, I give it to you because you want to build your church around everything that I have. I want to give everything to you. And I bet you if you give a tent, then there's a whole lot of other stuff that you have in terms of uh, time and talent and gifts and service 
and witness that will go to the Lord as well. Amen? Amen. We target that and we look that way. And here's what we're going to do. I am not satisfied with this, says the Lord. Well, I don't know if the Lord says it or not, but I'll say it. <laughs> it should be better. Here's what I want you to do. Everybody, not a check and not money, but everybody next week, bring something. I'm hiding the blocks. You bring something that you, when you come in, can contribute to this to make it better. What have you got? What does it need? Some height, some color, some fullness, some substance, some sound? What does it need to make it better? You bring that next week. We'll get a bigger table if we need it. I'll make it as big as it ought to be to exemplify the body of Christ. And then you know where we're going with this, right? Then you think what of you you need to give to the church of Jesus Christ, to this congregation, that we can more fully exemplify the body of Christ in this place. Amen? Amen. Do your homework. Come prepared next week. Let's pray. Lord God, it means everything to us that you have given us gifts. There is that in us which is wonderful. Every one of us. And we thank you, Lord, because it's from you. But we also, Lord, have to thank you because we know you have given it to us for the greater good. That if each one of us contributes that which you have given to us, everybody will be better. And we thank you, Lord. We ask guidance. What's us that we should give to us so that we can look like you? We pray it in Jesus' name. And now let's stand together as we say the Apostles' Creed, number 881, found in the back of your hymn. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit,
say the other day, follow Jesus, it'll make your life better, and it'll make you better at life. Think about that. Following Jesus is what we're up to, particularly during Lent. I, uh, I brought some of the conference newspaper for you because the uh, centerfold piece is all about spiritual disciplines. How to live my life in Lent so I grow closer to Jesus. It doesn't happen automatically, my friends. You have to work at it. And that's called spiritual disciplines. I recommend those uh, uh, editions of the paper. Take it and, and uh, see if it wouldn't be a guide for you during Lent. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make God's face to shine upon us, every last one of us, and make His blessings rich in our hearts. His love, His goodness, His mercy, and His grace be in us, now and always. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.